Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Fusion 360 Live. Uh, my name is Brad Tallis from Autodesk. Uh, helping me today on the keyboard is our friend Jason. So as we're going through today's live stream, please feel free if you have any questions uh, or comments, put them out there. Um, I was glancing at them before we started. I do really appreciate all the positive comments uh, out there. It's like one big huge family of, of all of us. So. Today we're going to um, continue on. We're going to do basically part seven of this series. I'm going to show uh, some new functionality and I'm going to show um, creating like, for example, some wires and wire harnesses. If you wanted to create like a realistic representation, like for a rendering um, next week, uh, part eight, I think will probably be the last part in this series. Uh, we'll do like exploded views and drawings. So. We left off last week um, where I was showing one of my favorite commands in here. I use section analysis all the time, but there's also a command in here called interference. And we left off by analyzing. So I'm going to click these two bodies, the, the back housing and the center housing. And I'm going to click on compute. And sure enough, it actually found some issues and so we can kind of see highlighted in red that these little wings right here are clashing with the back housing now last week i showed how you can uh, open up one of the components into a new session make some changes hit save and then when you go back to your top level assembly it actually highlights with a warning message saying hey there's a new component available well, check this out. I'm going to be talking about some new functionality that's brand new uh, in Fusion. So I'm going to start out. This isn't the part. I'm going to start out by creating a section analysis. So we've we've sectioned through this way. I'm going to section through um, in another direction. So I'm going to turn off the back housing real quick and Oops, inspect, section analysis. Um, I'm going to turn off this one. And I'm gonna start by clicking on this little, what I call the wing. <laughs> and you can kind of see how it's gonna allow me to slice through and um, I can pick anywhere I want on, on here. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave it right there so I can kind of see the wing. And I need to turn that guy on. Okay, um, and I'll go ahead and turn the back housing back on. And sure enough, we can see where that's clashing, even just in the section analysis. So, like I said last week, um, oh, actually, you know what? I, I apologize. I uh, actually wanted to show something even before we started. Um, I just saw it in my um, timeline down here. Check this out. Um, let me make sure I'm sharing my screen here. This this really impressed me. So I love the fact that you guys are following along. You're always attending these live streams. And here's um, Tuan Lee posted out in the Fusion 360 users Facebook group that he's been following along and was able to create this whole assembly. So congrats. I love that. I think that's awesome. So um you know, if you guys want to, please feel free to post what you've been doing out on the Fusion 360 group. We'd love to see what you guys are doing, not only with this, but with uh, anything you might be designing. Okay, um, so what I wanted to show is some new functionality. And to see this, I'm gonna go to my help menu. I'm sorry, I lied, my name, <laughs> preferences. So I'm gonna click on my name and then I'm gonna click on preferences. And this will bring up my preferences. Over here is preview features. And I highly recommend coming out to this at least once or twice a month, because this is where we add functionality that's not 100% fully baked into the product, but we want our customers to try it out, to see different things. And right here is edit in place. And you'll notice I've activated it, or it's checked, okay? So, I have that turned on. Watch what happens now. If I hover over this center housing, you'll see that there's a little 
uh, edit icon or this little pencil icon that says edit in place. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click on that and what it's going to do is it's going to allow me to make changes to the center housing right in this session. I didn't have to open it up into a new design, you know, and edit it in that design and then bring it back in here. In fact, you'll notice there's like a blue border all the way around my screen. And then I also see this edit in place across the top with a green checkbox. Okay, so what this is gonna allow me to do is now I'm gonna zoom up um, on this region here and I can turn off this back housing just to let me see a little bit better. But I'm gonna go ahead and pick on this little tiny edge right there. Right click and say chamfer. Okay, now I'll turn the uh, back housing back on. Let's kind of look at it maybe more from the top view. And I'm gonna just start adding a chamfer and notice it's actually updating in place. Okay, so I can visually see. In fact, let me make sure I'm looking straight down at the top of it. Let me zoom out here just a little bit so you can see what's going on. And now I can visually see my spacing or what my gap is and all that kind of stuff. So I can come in here and say maybe, you know, maybe like 0.3, let's just give that a try. And sure enough, that's editing this center housing without having to switch to a different session. Okay, in fact, I'm gonna do both of those wings at the same time. So let me go ahead and just to simplify, I'll turn off that back housing, kind of zoom up here real quick. I'm gonna control select to that guy and you can kind of see how it updated also. Turn on my back housing again. Take a look from the top and I can now see that I have no clashing going on and I was able to make a change. So I'm gonna go ahead and say okay. Now I would do the same thing on the other side because there's um, you know the same issue on the other side but let's just go ahead and leave that one as it is and I'm gonna go ahead and say check finish edit in place. Okay and I'm back to my design. I didn't have to leave. I don't know if you can tell. I think this is really cool. Um, you know, I mentioned last week, you know, I've, I've been to hundreds, if not thousands of customers where all over their monitor are post-it notes of dimensions that they've written down and sizes and stuff like that because they're working in this part mode, saving it, working in part mode, saving it, and then switching to assembly mode and then they need to make changes and they have to write down everything. But here with edit in place, we can make the change without ever having to leave our assembly. So let's um, keep continuing on here. Um, okay, so, so I fixed that area. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off that um, section analysis real quick. And then um, I'm gonna do another inspect. And, it's pretty obvious <laughs> right here. There are mistakes in this design. I apologize. In fact, there's unfortunately quite a few mistakes, um, but that's because I was kind of reverse engineering it by hand or whatever. So obviously there's something going on here, but let's make sure there is. So I'm gonna do an interference and let's do the center housing and you know this um, front glass and I'll do a compute and Sure enough, it found and it actually highlights where the issue is. See, I can kind of see it in red. So this little mount right here is sticking into the glass and obviously that's not good. So, okay, so let's go ahead and work on that. So same thing, I mean, in fact, I didn't even have to exit out, but I'll go ahead and edit in place the center housing again, okay. And what this is going to allow me to do is work on that same part. Okay. So I need to figure out, you know, how do I fix this? So the first thing I'm going to do is just basically like click on that front face. And like I showed last week, it highlights in the timeline. Unfortunately, it highlights the combine. But at least I know pretty close to this is probably where this is happening. So I'm going to 
back up a little bit. So that's an extrude. And then this guy right here, this extrude kind of looks like that's the main extrude. So I'm going to go ahead and edit that. Okay. Now to simplify things, I might turn off this uh, mount so we can see a little bit better. Okay. And what this is going to allow me to do is drag and change the length of this. And I can actually snap it to the glass. So let me turn off the uh, front housing also um, right there so it's not in the way. And I'm just going to click on the face of the glass and you can kind of see how it snapped back. And now the front of this plastic part is sitting flush with the glass. Okay. Now I could type in a dimension or whatever, but in this case I'm going to say just, you know, let's cut that front of that off a little bit. It still has enough material there to hold the little um, optioelectric sensor or whatever, the light sensor that slides in there. Okay, so again, I made a change. I was able to use existing geometry to help me make that change. And this is what I really like. Okay, the next thing I'm going to kind of look at it. Um, well, actually, let me look at this direction from the front. There's a mask. There's this glass mask. Um, sorry, glass mask right here. And there's a hole through it. And you can see, for whatever reason, the hole does not line up with the slot of the, um, the center mount. So I want to change that also. So I'm going to go ahead and accept this change. Okay. And sure enough, there you can kind of, kind of see the, the hole doesn't line up. So let's edit the glass mask. I'll say edit in place. Now watch what happens to my timeline when I do this. It's now editing the glass mask and there's only two features because this is a very basic shape. There's a sketch and there's an extrude. So I'm going to go ahead and instead of like press pulling like I did uh, with that plastic part, I'm going to go back and actually edit the sketch. And it, let me kind of look at it this direction. And here we can see, and, and you can see all of the other parts, which are kind of cool. Um, this, the dimension's a little bit hard to see, but it's right here. I'll kind of move it up so you can kind of see it. So it's dimensioning from the center up 0.8. So I can come in here and maybe I'm just gonna try some things out. Let's just try 0.9 and see where that puts us. That puts us pretty close. Um, let's try 0.95 or something like that. And obviously that went too far. So I'm just gonna do something kind of in between there. So let's just do maybe point, I don't know, point nine two five or something. Let's give that a try. Actually, that looks perfect. So I was able to edit the sketch that was originally used to create the mask. And when I say finish, it's gonna update the downstream process, which is the extrude. And now that hole is lined up with that mount. And you can see that better here. Okay, so I'm done with the um, editing in place. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK, and we'll see that everything has been fixed right there. And I could keep going. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's, there's probably about five or six more errors I've noticed. Um, and you know, I apologize for that. I've had to rush kind of through this whole design. Um, I would like to go back and fix these. I have uploaded a newer version of this assembly. We made some changes to the circuit board, which you're going to see here in just a moment. Um, so if you're working along or whatever, please feel free in the description of the uh, live stream video. Um, I have my outline. And I also have an updated assembly. In fact, I think it says updated next to it. Okay, so that is a quick preview of the edit in place. Um, what I'm going to do now is I want to create some realistic wiring. You know, we've got the circuit board in here. I've got my laser diodes. I've got, you know, power supply, all that kind of stuff. I want to create a realistic representation. So I'm going to 
turn off a majority of my parts just to get them out of the way. For example, the drive shaft. I don't need the gears or the stake. I want to keep the stepper motor for now. I don't even need the heat sink. Um, I'll turn that guy off and get rid of some of these screws. And the reason for this is because I'm going to be rotating quite a bit. So I want to simplify um, what's on the screen as much as possible. So I'm going to turn off pretty much everything but what you see right here. Okay. Now, um, what we're going to do is Tyler, uh, I think maybe two weeks ago, did a really good demonstration of 3D splines. And we're going to use that functionality in our design here. Uh, let me see, I have, let me turn this guy. Okay, so I'm going to turn those screws off real quick. Okay, there we go. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna create, for example, you'll notice the stepper motor. I'm gonna create a wire harness that goes from here up to a plug in here. I wanna simulate like these laser diodes getting plugged into this um, plug over here, for example. And I will be honest, unfortunately right now, it's we're gonna have to do it kind of by hand. I know there's um, some softwares out there where you can do like wire harnesses automatically where you say pin one from connector one goes to pin four of connector two, for example. Um, we don't have that quite yet. So I'm going to be doing this manually, but again, it's more for, you know, like graphic representation. So what I'm going to do is um, let's start with, we'll do something easy first. We'll start with one of these laser diodes. Now the key thing that we want to be really concerned about is the tangency directions of our 3D splines. In fact, that's going to take the most of our time is making sure that those are correct. Now what I'm going to do to help me out is I'm going to start by creating some construction geometry and one of them is axis through cylinder. So watch what happens. I'm going to go ahead and click on this cylinder right here and you can see that it's going to create a construction line or an axis straight through the middle of that cylinder. In fact, I'll repeat my command. I'll do the same thing over here. And what this is going to allow me to do is this line is perfectly through the center of the cylinder and it doesn't matter what angle this is at or whatever. And I can use this line to help me define tangency directions. And so you'll see this as we go through. Okay. So I'm going to create a sketch. And I'm just going to go ahead and pick maybe like this front plane. Now, for what I'm doing, I want to make sure that my 3D sketch is turned on. And you'll notice that's this little checkbox right here. I've seen in the forums a lot of people asking about, you know, hey, my sketch looks different. Why is that? It's because this is turned on. If you're just doing regular sketching, go ahead and turn it off. But if you're going to be doing stuff like these wires, etc., you're going to want to have those turned on. Okay, so you'll notice I'm in my sketch menu. You'll notice my sketch plane kind of slices right through the, the middle of my stepper motor and my board and all that kind of stuff. But because I have 3D sketch turned on, I'm going to be able to sketch in 3D. So I'm going to do, for example, a spline. Now, what I'm about to do is going to be kind of weird. I'm only going to do two points, which is pretty much a line and not a spline. But you're going to see why we're going to use the spline command here. Um, so I'm going to zoom up and you'll notice as I get near this face right here, it kind of turns to a box and it's going to snap to that point. Okay. And you see my triad here. I'm not going to worry about which plane I'm drawing on or anything like that at this point. Um, so I'm going to zoom around and, um, and again, like I said, I haven't had a lot of time to work on this. I apologize. So for example, um, I don't have the inserts that go into these these connectors or whatever there would be like a crimp insert I don't I don't have those so just for simulation reasons I'm just gonna get near the pin that's inside here and again you'll notice it kind of snaps to a box 
when I get close to that, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and click right there. Okay, let me zoom around a little bit so you can kind of see what happened. I created a spline that went from the center of this wire or this probe, whatever you want to call it, to the center of this pin. And I'm going to go ahead and say, okay. Now it's a straight line, but notice the green handles right here. So splines allow you to change the tangency direction and the tangency weight. So watch, I'm gonna kind of look at it kind of from the side here. I'm gonna use some of my constraints to help me out here. So I want this tangency handle to be pointing in the same direction as this wire is. So I'm gonna come in here and say parallel. I'll click on that green handle and then I'm gonna click on this axis and watch what happens to my spline. Notice how it's now coming straight out and then curving. And this is the exact reason why I use the spline command instead of the line command. Okay, so I can also click on, for example, that dot right there and say move. And this is gonna change the weight of the tangency handle. So basically how, how tight it's coming in or whatever. So I can, oops, I can change how gradual I want that weight to be by pulling that handle in or out. But I kind of, I'm just going to leave it default. So now you can see it's going to come straight off of this probe. Okay. And I want to do the exact same thing over here. So I'm going to zoom up. I'll click on my uh, spline. You can see the handle. So I'm going to click on the green handle and I'm going to say I want that to be parallel and I just have to pick an edge that points in the right direction. It could be any of these edges. Honestly, it really doesn't matter as long as it's pointing in the right direction. So watch what happens when I do that. You'll see the wire kind of now gradually go in there. Again, I could click on this endpoint and move it. And let me kind of look at it more from the top or from the side a little bit so you can kind of see what happens when I change. Um, oops, I guess it's in 3D, so it's not going to let me do that. Just a second here. Make sure I grab the right thing. Move. Yeah, okay. I'm pointing the wrong direction. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave that for now. So what it did let me look at it from the top so now you can see my straight line is now this real nice gradual s curve okay so i'm going to do the exact same thing i'll go a little bit faster i'll say spline zoom up grab that little box right there kind of rotate around a little bit zoom up on this pin the upper pin let's just say okay so I can rotate so I can kind of see it and I'm going to just move until I see that that box appear okay and I'll just go ahead and click and that's basically grabbing the the center point of this little pin that's inside there so right now it's a straight line I'll go ahead and say okay and I'm just going to repeat what I just did so I'll select this um, green tangency line and say I want it to be parallel with this axis. Now let me let me undo real quick. I'll show you why why did I do this axis? Well, if I um, click on this tangency line and I say parallel, I can't click on a cylinder or anything like that. I can't say I want it to be perpendicular to a face or anything like that. Unfortunately, it's it's looking for like sketch geometry. And, or construction geometry, and that's what that axis is. So the fact that I have that axis in there is gonna allow me to say, I want the tangency direction of my spline to be parallel or in line with the axis. Hopefully this is making sense, okay? So I'll do the exact same thing here. I'll click on that tangency handle, I'll just pick a line that points in the correct direction and we can see how that has made the wire now go gradually into the connector instead of at a sharp angle obviously 
Okay. Okay. Now, when I did this, I just did two points. But what if I wanted to control the shape of this wire a little bit more? So I'm going to go ahead and right click on one of these splines and you'll see right here, insert spline fit point. Okay. Now if I were to click, oops, sorry, let me, I forgot to click. So I'll say insert spline fit point. I'll kick a, click a point and you can see how it added that point there. Now if I click on it, you can see the tangency handle, but I'm just going to right mouse click and say move. And this is going to allow me to move and change that spline. Okay. Now notice how it's still keeping the, the tangency direction and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe I just want to move this over slightly and I want to move it up slightly or something like that just to make it look a little bit different. Okay. Another tip that I sometimes do is I'll go ahead and turn on, for example, the center housing and take a look kind of in 3D. And unfortunately, you're going to see one of the mistakes I've made. Um, but here is, you can kind of see everything is looking good. But on my board, unfortunately, <laughs> I hate to point out my mistakes, but um, the connector runs into the wing. So I might need to change the, the length of my wing or in reality, I would update the board and move this connector over, but I'm not gonna worry about that in this session. What I wanted to show there is that you can actually insert multiple points if you want to in a spline. So I always start simple with the two points and then I'll add in a point or two um, if necessary. Okay, so I'm happy with my 3D splines, okay? What I'm gonna do now is I want to simulate the wire. So I'm gonna zoom up here real quick. I'm gonna say create a sweep. In fact, the pop-up image that kind of comes up um, kind of gives an idea of what it looks like. So I'm gonna say sweep. What's the profile? Well, I already have a circle here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that. And then it's asking what is the path? I'm going to go ahead and click on this and you're going to see it's going to take that profile and it's going to sweep it along that path. Okay. Now you have a couple options here. I'm going to say new body because I don't want it to be, you know, connected to this. And again, this is kind of a weird example. Um, you know, I probably have some kind of a connector, like a crimp or something like that that connects to this, but I'm just kind of showing how you could, you know, simulate a wire, for example. So I'm gonna go ahead and say new body, I'll say okay. I'll repeat my last command again. Um, let me do a sweep. I'll click on that guy there, but now you'll notice my path is gone. Well, why? Well, that's because it's actually a sketch. So I'm gonna expand, open my sketches, turn on my sketch right there, and we can see it came back and appeared. So I'll say my path is this guy. I'll say new body. We can kind of take a look at what that's gonna look like. Looks pretty cool. I'll say okay. And I now have these wires. Okay, so here's where the, where the magic happens. If I go back to my sketch and I take this point and I say move, I can move this you know, wire over and maybe down a little bit like so. I'll say OK and finish sketch and you'll see that those wires update accordingly. So what's kind of neat here is, you know, we're taking some time to create the 3D splines. Um, but then once we sweep these, we can go back and edit those 3D splines and make changes to them and our wires will update accordingly. OK, now I want to obviously not have gray wires here, so I'm going to hit a for appearance, okay? So the shortcut key is A, or um, I think it's under the modify appearance, A. Okay, so we're gonna add some material to this. Now I'm gonna fold some of this up, um, since you've seen I'm already in here. So 
what I did for my wires, um, I went into plastic, because that's kind of what they are. And then you see we have some basic, you know, like ABS, nylon, etc. I'm going to go into um, translucent, and you'll see that we have a bunch of different ones like blue, gray, green, etc., red. So I'm going to just drag this red onto this body, and you'll see that it's going to turn it into kind of a shiny plastic red. Okay, and light will reflect off of that. You can kind of see that, for example. Okay, and then I might want the other one to be black, let's just say but we don't have a black in here. So I'm just gonna maybe do this gray. So I'm gonna just drag this gray onto the other body, like so. You can kind of see it changed a little bit, and it now appears in my design. I'll go ahead and right click and say edit, and I can change the color, and you can kind of see even live updates, what that's going to look like. I'm just going to drag it down to 000, and I now have a black wire, okay? And I can rename this, so I could say black if I wanted to. Spell it right. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay. I'll say done and I now have a black wire in there and like I've shown this before but I can right um, let me move this guy so it's on my screen I can come in here and say add to favorites and so if I go into my favorites tab um, it'll show all of my colors and stuff that I've been using so if I go into favorites so here's that black that I just created okay so especially if you're doing lots of different um, colors for wires and stuff, you might want to add them into your favorites. Okay, so that's the basics behind um, creating wires. So we start with basically a two-point spline, and then we control the um, tangency anchor to a certain direction. So we want it to go you know, off of a certain wire and into another, um, like a connector, for example. What we're going to do next is we're going to do a ribbon type cable. I'll show you some cool stuff with this. Okay, um, so I could repeat and do the exact same thing for this other laser diode, have it maybe plug into you know this port over here, for example, if I wanted to, but you get the idea. What I want to do now is um, do more for creating a ribbon cable. So I'm going to do pretty much the exact same thing. I'm going to start by creating a sketch. And just, I could pick a face, honestly, it really doesn't matter. But I, I like to reference one of these planes. But because we're in 3D, it honestly really doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm going to look at it kind of straight on. I like to draw my spline kind of in one shape and then come back and tweak with it a little bit later. So obviously this is not going to be a two-point spline. The, the wires come out of this connector right here, and this stepper motor sits flush with a piece of plastic. So I don't have a lot of room right here. So I'm going to actually do a pretty tight um, change right here. Now you'll notice when I'm in my 3D sketch, sometimes you'll see like these black lines appear. Those are basically projections, and unfortunately my point might jump way far in the Z direction or in the negative, in this case, in the negative Y direction, for example. If you hold down your control key as you're drawing, you'll notice I don't get that um, auto projection. So I'm going to just basically draw a pretty tight um, spline like so, and I'm going to have it come behind the stepper motor, and then I'm going to have it kind of come up like this, maybe something like this, and then I'll hold down my control key again because I don't want it to catch, and then I might end somewhere like this, okay? That's the kind of the basic shape I want it to follow. But watch what happens when I say okay. It's all on one plane. I didn't really take advantage of the 3D sketch. I just drew it all on one plane. But now I can come in 
and edit this sketch. So of course I want this endpoint to be more in line with this connector. So I'm gonna come in here and say move. And as I drag this over, you kind of get visual confirmation of what's going on here. So I'm gonna kind of bring this more toward the middle and maybe I want to bring some of these other points around. So I'm gonna start adding a little bit more 3D-ness to it, okay? I also know that the, um, uh, the power connector is like literally right behind this stepper motor. So I need to move some of these wires out of the way. So I'm gonna grab a couple of these points and just drag them out of the way, okay? So, and again, you can kind of see I can even like click through if I needed to or whatever. So I'm grabbing all of these points and it's now no longer just a planar 3D spline. It's now more three-dimensional. Okay, and again, I'm just kind of freestyling right now. I can always come back and change this, but this is looking pretty good to me now. I got the I got the wire kind of coming to the left of the stepper motor. It's lined up with my um, connectors and it's coming off of that guy right there, okay? Okay, so the last thing I want to do is make sure that it's kind of pointing right toward my connector. So I'm gonna you know, click on the spline and here is the uh, tangent handle. And I could say, I want that to be parallel and I'm just gonna pick an edge on this connector. And luckily it didn't have to move very far. I, I don't know if you saw that or not, but it just kind of moved it over a little bit. Now this is perfectly parallel with this edge right up here. And again, it really doesn't matter which edge I select in that case. And I'm gonna do the same thing down here. Notice this tangency handle is really not pointing in the correct direction. So I'm gonna click on this guy here and like that edge there. And now you can see it's, the spline's kind of coming right into there. So I'm going to, again, look at it kind of from the side here. And I might move some of these points around. Now that I have a good understanding of what's going on here, I might move this down a little bit. I might bring this guy um, and at that point, bring him down like that. And I might even bring this one down a little bit further so it's more in line with the pins, for example, okay? So, so I might have to move it in 3D a little bit. Let's just bring that down even further. Bring this guy down a little bit further. Okay, I'm just kinda trying to make something look pretty good here. Okay, so tangency uh, angles are correct. Okay, now what I wanna do is draw my wire harness. So I'm gonna go ahead and say finish sketch. I got my sketch the way I want. And remember, you can label these. So I can come in here and rename this particular sketch and call this um, wire harness sketch or whatever to help me remember which sketch in my timeline was used to create that particular spline. So now if I hover over this, you can see it says higher <laughs> wire harness sketch. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is I need to create a sketch somewhere on this spline. So we're gonna use the construction menu again and there's a really cool command in here called plane along a path, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this path and you'll notice that it puts a construction plane right where I clicked. And I can actually drag this. You'll notice it's gonna rotate around and follow this spline, but I'm gonna bring it all the way to the very end, okay? So you'll notice it says one. I could type in you know, 0.5 and it's gonna put it halfway along that spline, kind of a cool little trick. I could also come in here and say physical, I want it to be one inch, you know, on that spline or whatever. So we have a lot of different options there. So I'm going to, if I go here, you'll see it's at zero. And if I go to the end of it, all the way here, it's gonna be at one. So that's basically like a ratio between zero and one. 
I'm gonna go ahead and say okay, and I now have a sketch plane, or a construction plane, I should say, right at the very end of this spline, and it's tangent to the end of that spline, and that's what's important right here, okay? So I can now select this and say create sketch. I'm gonna go ahead and draw a circle. Now you'll notice my 3D sketch is still turned on, but that's okay, it doesn't matter in this example because I'm drawing a, a circle here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I think I made these um, 0 0.05 is about a good size in this case. And I now have a circle that's right at the very end of this spline. But I kind of want to simulate a wire harness, so I'm going to use the pattern command, rectangular pattern. What's the object? That's the object. I'll start to drag so you can kind of see what's going on here. Now, you'll notice it says direction type, one direction. I'm going to change this to symmetric and now it's going to be symmetric around that center point. And I also want to have five wires. So now you can see I've got five wires. And I know the spacing is supposed to be 0 0.05 because that's what the diameter of these circles are. Now by doing that, they're all going to touch. They're all like tangent with each other. So this is actually going to become one body because they're touching. But that's okay. You'll see the, the benefit behind that. I'll say finish sketch and I now have these five circles right at the end of this wire. We'll do the exact same command again. We'll say sweep. Let me zoom up a little bit. I'm going to grab these profiles. I could do them individually like so or I could just draw a box around them and grab all of them at the same time kind of a quick way of doing that. What's the path? I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and you'll see it's going to hopefully it says okay so notice it gives me an error the body would self intersect itself okay so that is probably because this might be too tight down here so it's giving me a warnings about that so let me go ahead and edit that spline again and let's just maybe make some changes real quick um, let me move this guy down like so and maybe move this guy over I'll just come down like that and hopefully that'll minimize the tightness of it um, so let's try that sweep again so I'll say sweep draw a circle around that um, what's the path no. Okay, let me try. Of course it works when you practice it. It doesn't work when you... Uh, oh, it might be because it's grabbing the profile when I'm doing the window select. That's what it looks like. Oh, so it's this last circle. Interesting. Not sure why. Let me um, unselect that guy. Okay. So, I'm just to minimize wasting your guys' time, I'm just going to do a four wire, but I might be able to fix this here in a second. What I wanted to show here is you'll notice that it's sweeping along and it's kind of bending. And when I get down here, the wires aren't horizontal. However, I have this cool twist angle here. So, I might just say something like, let's just say 45. Now it does take a little bit of time to calculate because it's having to sweep and twist as it's curving along here. But we'll get an update and actually, wow, that was actually pretty darn close, okay? But what it's doing is it's actually twisting the wires as it's sweeping along. I'm gonna go ahead and try and add in that last circle and see if it's gonna let me do it. Hopefully it will. Now again, this it's taking some time because it's having to do some pretty complex math. Uh, yeah, sure enough it did. So it must have had something to do with the twist there. So I could come in here and I could keep tweaking this, you know, 47 degrees, 48 degrees or whatever to get that perfectly horizontal. I'm gonna leave it like this because it'll actually look better, I think, when, we, when we're said and done. 
So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And I've now created this wire harness. Um, now, like I mentioned before, this is going to be like all one body because um, they're touching each other, but that's okay. Now, you might be excited and say, oh, let's add the color to it right now. We're not going to. We're going to wait till the end because we're going to be coloring individual faces instead of individual bodies. And you'll actually notice, like, for example, this one looks good, but as I move across, you'll notice, like, it's not highlighting this face down here and stuff. So we're gonna to have to apply our appearances to, to certain faces. Okay, now let's connect this into our connector here. So again, using pretty much the same idea, we're going to create some construction geometry. Um, so I want to make sure I'm grabbing to the center of each of these wires. So I'm going to start by creating a sketch, okay? And then I'm going to project each of these circles onto that sketch. I'll say okay. And you'll notice that it put um, points at the center, but it didn't in, in this one here. I can't visually see it, so I'm going to go ahead and force a point. So I'm going to say point get near the center and click and it's going to create a point there for me okay so sometimes it does all the way, all of them sometimes it it misses one or two of them it depends so i just added a point there i also want to control my tangency directions of my wire so i'm going to do that exact same thing this time i'm going to do axis perpendicular to a face at a point. Now, why can I not use this one? Well, technically this isn't a cylinder anymore, right? Or a cone or a torus. So I'm gonna say perpendicular to a face at a point. And this is exactly why um, we projected that geometry. So it's saying what's the face and then what's the point? And you'll see that it's gonna create an axis that's perpendicular to that face at that center point. Now I can only do one at a time, so I'm going to have to repeat this. Now I'm not 100% sure, um, I'm, I'm guessing that all of these axes will be pointing in the correct direction, but just for my sanity, um, I like to uh, make sure that each wire is pointing in the correct direction, so I am going to spend the time to um, to do this, let me go perpendicular face at a point, say OK. I think my right mouse button isn't responding like it should because it's not repeating my last command half the time it does and half the time it doesn't. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that, say OK. OK. Now, um, again, I should have some crimp connectors in here, but I don't. So I'm going to fake it. I'm going to basically make the wire end at this, you know, the point of these little pins right here. I know that's not exact, but I literally had no time this week to prep for this live stream. It's, we've been so crazy busy helping customers and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so same thing. I'm going to create a sketch. I apologize. A lot of this is kind of repetitive on today's session. Um, but I wanted to kind of show you how you can do this. So I'm going to orient my screen ever so slightly. You'll see the, the benefit of doing this. Let me uh, kind of zoom up a little bit. And so I can see those pins. So I'm going to make sure my 3D sketch is checked. I'll say spline. And I'm just going to get near... Um, I might have to zoom up just a little bit more. I'm just going to get near one of the corners of the pin, like right there. And then I can actually pick through. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that point there. Hit the Enter key. And I've just created a spline that went from the end of the pin to the end of the wire. And I'm just going to do this a couple times. Like I said, kind of repetitive, but you, hopefully you'll see what I'm doing here. So get, get near, making sure I'm catching to that box. 
and I'll say that guy, spline. And again, the key point here is to use the spline command because that's going to give me the ability to change my tangency direction and weight. Okay, so I've just created those five wires. Let me kind of zoom out a little bit like so. And I'm going to start with on the wire side here. I'll say parallel. I'll click on that green handle and that line there and you see that wire, that spline is going to come straight, straight off of this existing wire. So again, you can kind of see, yes, it takes a little bit of time to set this up, but you're, you're going to reap the benefits of it and how cool your wiring is going to look. So I'm just grabbing each of these green handles and clicking on the axes of each of those wires. And now you can kind of see how it starts to spread out a little bit as it's going into the connector. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing on the connector side. Let me zoom around here a little bit. So here's the, the handle and I'm just going to pick a line that points in the correct direction. And you can kind of see how now the spline is a little bit more curved. Okay, so that guy, that guy there. Again, doesn't really matter which edge I'm clicking on as long as it's pointing in the right direction, you know, that I want that to go. And then I'll do this last handle and let's just say maybe that guy there. And I'll say finish sketch. And there you see a lot of lines on the screen right now, but that's okay. I can turn um, off my construction geometry if I need to. I can turn off my, my sketches and there's the construction geometry. So you can clean things up once everything's created. Okay. And now kind of looking from the top, you can see how nice each of these wires look. Okay. And then it's the exact same thing, sweep. So I'm going to come in here and say sweep. I'm going to do one at a time. So I'm going to say that's my profile and that's my path. Now I could say new body, but in this case, I'm going to say join because um, I want it to be part of the, the wire harness. And I'll go ahead and say, okay, repeat my uh, last command. Man, my right mouse button is driving me crazy. So I'll say sweep. Now, again, my sketch went away, but I'll go ahead and turn it back on. Pick that line there. Oops. Pick that line there as my path. Join it together. Sweep. Path. Okay. I'll say OK. One more and then we'll be done. So I'll pick this path here. OK. Let's kind of take a look at it now from the top and we can see how this wire harness or this ribbon wire, I should say, um, is now you know, plugged into that connector and it looks pretty cool. Um, we are getting near the end of time. The, the, I would do the exact same thing down here. I would project my sketch. I would create those axes at points. And then I would just draw you know, those two point splines between the end point of a pin and do the tangency can I mean it's exactly what we did here you're not missing out by me not doing that let's go ahead and hit a for appearance okay and I'm gonna scroll down into this translucent and like I mentioned before if I were to drag this it's gonna do the whole body typically it's gonna do the whole body and that's because right up here it's saying apply to the body okay well, we don't want to do that. We want to say faces. And now I can come in here and say, for example, I want that to be blue and I want that to be blue. Okay. Then I'll do the same thing. Let's do green. I'll drag green on here. Now watch what happens when I do the green. You'll notice it did it on one side, but it didn't do it on this inside. And again, that's because these faces are just like touching each other 
or intersecting each other. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I get both of those faces. Let's do maybe yellow next. I think the yellow is kind of a cool one. So I'll do yellow on that guy. Same thing, I just need to make sure I grab that. Let's do the red on the faces. Like so. Okay, and then lastly, um, oh, I don't know what color do we want to do. Um, let's we'll do the let's do the white. Okay, and you can pick any colors you want. You can make your own colors, and now it looks like really. I think it looks like a really cool ribbon cable um, that would look really nice in renderings and all that kind of stuff. So this is the the basics of creating wiring um, right now you know we create a spline we can use our new 3d spline technology um, and then we're just sweeping profiles whether it's a circle whether it's a pattern to make a, make a ribbon cable i could have done a pattern of circles around the center and make like a twisted cable it's really up to you so um, next week i'm going to basically finish this design um, this whole project, we're now in um, section eight, I guess. So I'm gonna do a, like an exploded view of it and then some drawings, just kind of show how you can go from an idea all the way to, you know, for example, some drawings of the product. Um, I, I'm really blessed that you guys have been following along this whole time. You know, some of you are sharing what you've been creating. I know Steve Sneed has shared some of the, um, of the laser projector out on Facebook. Um, it makes me really happy to see that you guys are getting something out of this. So I look forward to seeing you on a future live stream. Make sure you check our um, live stream channel to see what live streams we're coming up with. So we're doing like cam live streams, electronics live streams, um, Tyler and Jason uh, and Wayne are doing uh, live streams on Tuesdays. So um, gobble it up and have fun fusioning. Thank you.